Prescott takes the snap. Has time, fires, and it's intercepted, fired! Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4 with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. In the National Football League, all you ask for is an opportunity. And the Tennessee Titans have one in week 18, heading to Jacksonville, a win and you're in game against the Jaguars. 7:15 kickoff. You can hear us on Titans Radio beginning at 6 o'clock on 1045 the zone. It's for the AFC South Championship. Yep, it absolutely is. And everything that's happened up until this point is not really going to matter. Uh, the only thing that matters is what we do on Saturday night and our preparation leading up to it. It's fun. It's it, exciting. Yeah, I think that I want everybody to be excited. I want our players to enjoy the preparation. I want them to embrace the opportunity and, you know, get to work. Get to work indeed. Let's do it right here on the Mike Vrabel Show. The six-pack tonight, some key topics surrounding Saturday's game, so a little bit different. Let's talk about, in topic number one, some of the things that happened in the first game on December the 11th. Now, the four turnovers were really the overriding fact. I think so. That's, uh, it's hard to, hard to win when you turn the football over four times. But you made the point right after that <clears throat> game. You said, hey, we did some good things in this ball game. A few of the numbers, Derrick Henry had 20 touches for 154 yards. The offense with a good performance got in the red zone three times and scored three touchdowns, exactly what you want to do, but four sacks allowed. Yeah, and the other thing is we had nine explosive gains, which is second, yeah, yeah which is which is the second most that Jacksonville defense has given up on the season. So again, we, we talked about having done some good things. We have to be able to protect our quarterback. Um, and we have to be able to take care of the football offensively. Continue to do these things that we did. Um, be better on third down. These are some things that we can, can improve on uh, and, and find a ways to, again, this is a good defensive front. This is a team that's, you know, hit the quarterback a bunch. We're going to have to protect the quarterback and, and, and get it out of our hand. Yeah, Jacksonville been hitting the quarterback as of late. On the other side, the Titans not able to do as much as they wanted to with Trevor Lawrence. No sacks on him. And that leads to the 368 yards passing, passing. But you did hold them to 60 yards rushing on 25 carries. Yeah, they, they ran it. Uh, we did do a nice job. Etienne, explosive back, but just didn't do enough to affect the quarterback. And, and again, we can say zero sacks, but it's the 120 rating that is going to get you beat with the touchdown passes and the efficiency in which the quarterback can operate. So we, we are going to have to find a way to – to affect the quarterback, whether that be in coverage, you know, being tighter. Um, you know, the other thing we have to do is we have to be great tacklers. We, we have to be great tacklers. Uh, half of their yardage, uh, their passing yardage on the season is basically after they catch the football. And so, you know, close to 2,000 yards of their passing comes after they, they catch it. And that's going to be a huge key here is making sure that we're great tacklers. We saw the numbers for their tight end, Evan Ingram, with 11 catches for well over 100 yards and two touchdowns. Well, he had the one down the field. And yeah. then other than that, it was a lot of stuff at close to the line of scrimmage. He had to catch and run. He had a screen that he gained some big yards on. Um, really good player. Uh, he's really good with the football. And he's fast and athletic. And, you know, so it'll be important that, that we're on him. You always talk about teaching and learning. What did the Titans learn from that game on December the 11th? Well, hopefully a lot of the things that we talked about is that we can move the football. Uh, again, there's, there's no guarantee, but you, you can't win if you turn the football over. You can't win if you um, don't stop them better in the red zone. Um, you, you know, that it just comes down to us being able to, to be tighter on them, to affect the quarterback, to, to find a way to get the turnovers. That, you just can't win 
you know, if you don't turn the football over in this league consistently. And the last two minutes of the first half was such a well game. situationally, yeah. And I think we, you know, we did check the box there. We had the same situation come up the next week in, in you know, LA. You know, kept them out of the not only we kept them out of the end zone at points, but we were able to to get an interception there with Roger. So Roger missed one against Jacksonville at the end of half. Came back, everybody was, you know, forcing them to, to throw the ball out of bounds, obviously, or just throw it through the end zone. You know, he tried and we made a play. Made the tip to Kalu. Yep. Very good play. When we come back, a look at the fact that the Titans will have a better roster available for Saturday night in Jacksonville. You don't want to miss this on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Stay tuned. Titans, Jaguars, Saturday night in Jacksonville, 7:15 kickoff. The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4, continuing from the Bet MGM Studios. When the Titans took on the Jags back on December 11th, there were several significant Titans who did not take part in that game. The list is pretty impressive when you look at it. Uh, Danico Autry is somebody who jumps out. Trey Avery, Traylon Burks, Christian Fulton, Hassan Haskins, one of your better special teams players, yep. also did not play in that ball game. So you have some reinforcements that you expect to have back on Saturday night, and that's certainly a good thing. Well, it can never hurt, you know, but how they play is the most important thing, and Danico is going to have to, um, you know, help us do what we talked about in the first segment, which is affect the quarterback. He's going to have to bat some balls down, hit the quarterback, you know, do some of those things that, that are going to help you win. You know, Trey Avery is going to have to come back and play better at times than he did against the Cowboys and continue to try to get some ball production. You know, he has had some PBUs, but, you know, also I think some 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 lapses in, in judgment and uh, and technique. Uh, Traylon, you know, continue to progress. He can help us, you know, offensively. You know, Christian Fulton's got to go out there and he's got to cover. You know, part of the fact in the quarterback is tight coverage, and, and he's going to have to, to prove that and that he can match up with those guys. Uh, and then you mentioned Hassan, and hopefully he can help us on, on special teams. Hassan did a nice job the other night against Dallas. Yeah, he runs hard. You know, he runs hard. Again, we talked about the fourth down run, and, you know, we've got to give him a little bit more room and, and do a better job on, on some of those runs. But uh, he runs hard, and, again, you know, his, his toughness um, has never been in question. And taking that opportunity that he got against Dallas, gaining confidence, I would think. I think so, but I think he's done that through special teams, and, you know, even some of the returns that he had for us in the kickoff uh, kickoff return phase uh, earlier in the year. Um, but but he's gained some confidence in the special teams units, and, you know, hopefully we can find ways to have him help us offensively as well. And there were some guys who did not play against Dallas last Thursday night who hopefully will have the opportunity to be available. Uh, that listing is headed by Dylan Cole, who's missed the last couple of games with an ankle injury. Of course, Derek Henry also jumps out on that list, as does Amani Hooker, who's been battling back from a knee injury. And Jeffrey Simmons, who got a needed week off, he's been battling that ankle since October. Yeah, he's, he's been fighting and making sure that he's there each and every week. And again, I, I know what he goes through every week to get there. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, we're going to need a big game from Derek. You know what I mean? When your best players have to play good for you to win in this league. And, you know, it, you talked about Amani Hooker. You know, hopefully we can get some some ball production and some tackling uh, from him. We're, we're going to need plays to, to come from all, all areas. And then Dylan Cole, you know, I'm sure you know, we'll see where he's at at the end of the week to, to be able to return to his you know, special teams role and, and see where he fits in defensively. Through the time that you've spent over the last two or three weeks where you've had to have a lot <laughs> of young guys play, some guys who've stepped up and that, that have gotten your confidence more and more in that period of time, that you're not afraid to throw them back out there now at any point. Well, I think Monty Rice has improved. I think Dr. Gibby, Jack Gibbons has, has improved. I mean, that's, you know, um, plain to see in, in the way that these guys are around the football. You know, Trey Avery's been around the football, and I know that, you know, there, there wasn't, there were some mistakes made against Dallas. Um, Roger McCreary continues to play aggressive and tight and, you know, I know he had the P.I., but, you know, he's going to keep challenging. He's going to keep coming back and swinging, and that's, I think, what we love about him. And Tier Tart, we see right there, had his first career sack in the ball game. Uh, a lot of those guys on the defensive line really played hard last Thursday. Yeah, I mean, I think that they were all looking forward to the opportunity, and, and 
and I think they went out and made the most of it. We even got PV in there. We got Jaden PV in there and got him some snaps. So, um, you know, we'll see where things shake this week. And of course, the Titans will start Joshua Dobbs Saturday night in Jacksonville. What did you like about Josh and his performance against Dallas, and what do you hope he's able to build on going into the game Saturday? Well, I thought he, he operated well. I thought he was decisive with the football. I thought he knew where to go, where he wanted to go, where he needed to progress to based on pre-snap looks, based on post-snap looks. You know, we moved the pocket with him, and I thought he was efficient. You know, this throw here to, to Traylon on the move um, ha had some really nice throws down the field, what was able to get going with uh, the end of the half situation and, and get it out to trailing and allow us to call time out. Um, there, there he is on the move right there to Chig early in the game. So, you know, a lot of good things he was able to progress through. I, we didn't help him early on with some drops, which, you know, hey, that's going to happen. But, you know, we have to limit those. We have to, you know, make sure that we're helping the quarterback the best that we can and we have to be able to protect him. But what I'm hopeful for this week is that he improves and, you know, goes out and has some fun and leads our offense. When we come back, we're going to introduce you to Epic Western's genuine Titan, Kent. It's one of those defensive linemen that played a good game the other night against Dallas. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. He describes himself as a Swiss Army knife on the defensive line and... Danico Autry might be his football idol. This week's epic Western genuine Titan, meet Demarcus Walker. Demarcus, are you having the best year of your career? Statistically, you know, uh, yes, correct. Um, you know, uh, this, this has been a blessing so far, and you know, to have a lot of success, you know, uh, it's been surreal, because I'm a hard worker, and, and you know, just to see the fruits, you know, of your labor pay off started to pay off, you know, it's, it's surreal. Why did it come at age 28? Trust me, I wanted it to happen at 25, 23, 24. Uh, simple answer, I just wasn't ready. You know, um, I had a lot more uh, things to work on, a lot more things to see for myself. And, um, um, you know, uh, trial and error is definitely, you know, um, a bit of why I'm here. And every year I felt, um, you know, I just got back up attacked harder in the offseason. I read that you had a stutter when you were a young man. Correct. And so you like to encourage kids who have a stutter to not be ashamed, to keep working through it, and to understand there's nothing wrong with someone who stutters. Absolutely. I mean, no one's perfect. And, you know, um, in Denver, I was, I started my own foundation for speech impediment kids. And sometimes I might have that situation where I might get caught up on my words. Uh, through the grace of God, I was able to overcome, you know, um, that situation and be able to control my stomach and use my words and be able to, you know, talk in any platform or any situation without feeling too much pressure. And, you know, still to this day, I haven't really got a chance to home in and, you know, find some kids that, you know, have or struggle with that problem. But still to this day, you know, I'm, I'm there and willing to help anyone who has a speech impediment because I've been there. I've overcame so many emotions, depression, you know, with, you know, like that's something that like people really, people really struggle with that, man. You know, not being able to say what you want to say. Imagine if you're in trouble. Imagine if you just mad or sad, you're not let, you're not able to get your words out. Now I was that kid one day. So being able to have, um, you know, a strong stomach and be able to use, you know, my words correctly, you know, I'm so thankful for. You sit down with Demarcus Walker, you cannot help but really enjoy the guy. Yeah, very engaging, he's polarizing, and, and again, his, his hard work, he comes to work every day with a great attitude, willingness to uh, learn and, and work and get better and improve, and, and he knows there's so many things that he can continue to improve on. Fits your program, he's a genuine tight. That's why we made him the genuine That's tight. That's exactly right, well done. Good choice. All right, know your <laughs> foe is next. Jacksonville is the foe. We'll talk more about that on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Time to know your foe on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Of course, you have to start with Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback, don't you? Yeah, I mean, big, athletic, strong arm, can throw in the pocket, can throw outside of the pocket, 
He's really done a nice job of taking the taking care of the football lately. Uh, 14 touchdowns, two just two interceptions here the last couple weeks. Uh, he's not getting hit, and uh, <clears throat> he's doing a nice job of distributing the football to these different weapons. And you know, you can see the timing here on that. And then again, he's athletic enough to to be able to 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 run when called upon. So. You know, he's playing well. He wasn't the first pick of the draft for, for no reason. And uh, we have to do everything we can to, to try to affect him. And he's got receivers and talented guys around him. ETN, the running back's already over 1,100 yards. You talk about Kirk and Jones and Ingram, two wide outs and a really talented tight end. A lot of speed. A lot of speed. And Etienne has got contact courage. He is not afraid to run in between the tackles. This isn't just a change of pace speed guy this is a guy that will cut get downhill run right through two defenders and you know it's 88 now at the gate because uh, he has track speed and uh, you know we'll have to do a great job of first starting there making sure that there's not a lot of seams but then you know a lot of skill players a lot of guys catch and run uh, Kirk is good with the football excellent with the football in his hands after the catch uh, Ingram as we saw there earlier in the graphics uh, and then obviously Jay Zay Jones gives him a consistent big target uh, in the secondary. On defense, some talented young players, but the leading tackler in the NFL, Foy Olakun, is something else. He's probably going to lead the league again. Josh Allen is up to six sacks. And then in the secondary, Andre Sisco making plays, but R Rayshon Jenkins is really making things happen from the safety. <clears throat> well, you can see here the pressure that they put on the quarterback, uh, forcing turnovers. I think they're, they're third in the league in forcing turnovers. Um, so that'll be obviously paramount. Um, you know, you mentioned Ola Kuhn. He just makes every tackle pretty much that gets past the, the defensive line. Very instinctive player. Uh, he's really come into his own. Um, but, but it's about this front. It's about these edge guys that they keep rolling in there. Allen, you know, leading the team in quarterback hits. Arden Key continues to, to play everywhere. Walker, um, Chase on. And they just keep throwing edge guys at you. All right, when we come back, <coughs> Nissan keys to success to win the AFC South. That's next on the Mike Rapel Show. Mike Rapel Show, presented by Shift 4, continues from the Bet MGM studio. Time for the Nissan keys to success for Saturday night in Jacksonville. First one, pretty obvious after the December 11th game. Titans got to win the turnover margin. Well, yeah, not only Captain Obvious after that game, but also, and I'm referring to myself. I thought I'm you were not saying I was no, Captain Obvious. No, 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 no. This team, when they've lost a turnover, the eight times they've uh, won the turnover uh, lost the turnover margin, and they're two and six. Not counting last Sunday, they're they're one and one and six. Um, when they lose. So obviously you flip that around when they've won the turnover margin, they've been able to, to win a lot of football games. So it starts there and we got to take care of the football. We got to find ways to get some turnovers against them uh, from our defense. Got some against Dallas. Yeah, we Maybe did. That's turning we, around. We did. Maybe it's turning around. We just got to make sure that we're tipping some passes. You know, the ball's not round. Uh, I don't know which way it's going to bounce, but we got to start tipping it up in the air and hoping it bounces our way. All right. Red zone time <clears throat> is key number two. You've got to win the red zone matchup. Well, they've averaged uh, 28 points a game their last six games, so they're scoring a bunch of points. Uh, they've hit some X plays, but they were also, you know, doing a nice job down in the red zone. If they get the ball down there, you know, we have to force them to kick and attempt field goals. We, we can't turn this into – you know, let's trade touchdowns with the Jaguars. I don't think that that's the recipe. And when we get down there, we have to continue to do what we've done and what we did against them last time, which was score touchdowns in the red zone. It feels like the red zone offense has gotten back on track. Yep, we had a couple clunkers there for a couple weeks, but, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, guys are understanding what's going on and we've been able to, to try to punch it in there when we've gotten down in there. Yeah, like the Robert Woods touchdown. Absolutely. Where he settled down for Josh Dobbs. Yep. Got in between the zone, and caught it, drop step, and, 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 and scored a touchdown. Good stuff. All right, finally, they have a great returner to the Jaguars in Jamal Agnew. So you got to cover. Yep, you're going to have to. You know I mean? We feel like this is going to be something where he's got six career return touchdowns and I don't care what the numbers say. This is a talented player. He's a fast player. He's got great vision, great strength. We're going to have to be great. We're going to have to go down there. But also, when you do that, 
you can change some momentum, you can bring some excitement, you can, you can start to set the table uh, for the defense if you go down there with some speed and some violence uh, to try to win the hidden yardage. All you ask for in this league is an opportunity, and you got one Saturday night. I agree. Doesn't matter what happened to get to this point is we're here, and, uh, you know, we got to win. Got to get in the tournament. Absolutely. All right. Good luck. Thank you. We're excited about this ball game coming up <clears> Saturday <throat> night, TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. It is a 7:15 kick. You can hear the broadcast on 104.5 The Zone and other Titans radio stations beginning at 6 o'clock. Titans countdown with Rhett Bryan and Amy Wells. For head coach Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Happy New Year. We'll see you next time.